It's one thing that's universal. That's hair. That's skill. So I had never had a pair of clippers and she gave me my first pair of clippers was a designer and a peanut. And she said, baby, you cut hair. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll cut some hair. The barbering community is very supportive of one another. I can go into any barber shop in, in my area and I can you know, walk in, just surprise a barber and they're happy to see me. My dad, Jim Wall, he knew that it was a relationship business, and it's still a relationship business around the world in the professional market. So it's all about how well you network yourself, how well you speak to people. They tell their friends, oh, not only is he good, but he's actually a really cool guy. You know, he treats our kids well, he's respectful. Besides your skill set, I think your, your personality goes a long way. Going to school teaches you how to think differently how to move differently, how to cut differently, how to respond differently. Styles come and go. It really goes by the relevancy, the culture, how fast people pick up on it. One of my favorite things to do is, is create controlled chaos with a man's haircut is to have clean lines to make it look nice, but, it, but to also have it just enough edge, enough personality and character to it so that they can show their independence with it, but still have it conform to the norm when they have to. Back then, you might have seen a guy with a pompadour, the skinnier pants, the greaser look with the cigarettes in the sleeve, which they're still doing that, except the difference nowadays is that the guy's tatted up. He might have a real nice beard to go with it. It still has the same look, but it has evolved into something more like today. And setting the trends, it's always been traditional that it comes from ball players, stars, any type of celebrity that you constantly see in television. Now you have a broader range of artistic barbers who are behind the scenes that recognize their importance. And they're stepping up and saying, hey, let me try this. This is what's hot. Let me do this. Barbering has always been gentleman's grooming. We've expanded, we've, we've kind of dissolved the, the traditional barbering boundaries, if you will, because women are wearing short haircuts. And women like precision haircutting now. It's about artistry, it's about looking at our canvas, it's about understanding what we have in front of us that we can work with. It's just about stepping outside of our comfort zones. This is why we're in this industry, because we love to create. To, to, to be able to think outside of the box. You have to be able to think like an artist. Think, what am I gonna need to get my vision accomplished and which tools am I gonna have to use according to the way the texture of my hair is? I use wall tools over any other tool because they last for a long time. The, uh, the warranty that's on them that you get, the guarantee, if something goes wrong, I can easily just send it in and I know it's gonna get fixed and sent back to me. Quality is a big focus for Wall. Once we sell a product, we don't want it back, and we want people to feel like it's a trusted product and it's a name that can hold up over time. Once it's out there, we have a customer service department that we are very proud of that really backs up the purchase. We hold uh, very tight manufacturing tolerances for our cutting performance, for our blades and for the mechanical drive system that delivers the power to the blades. There is a, a craft in, in building hair clippers and every one that we put out the door and that has our name on it means something to us. And so we, we stand by our products and we want them to be the best that they can be because we know our, you know, our customers are using these products all day long and, and they rely on them for their own businesses. It's not necessarily looked upon as a status position, if you will, to be in the hair industry. And those people that say, oh, you just do hair, aren't going and just sitting on the street and let anybody cut their hair either. So it's a very respectable profession. I had my 
shop. I have an incredible family. I have a husband and two kids. I have a dog. I'm a soccer mom if I'm not cutting hair. So, yeah, you know, you don't look like Barber. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that there was a certain way that barbers were supposed to look. People are, are recognizing barbering as not just haircutting, but artistry. It's a craft. Each haircut, you're trying to pull out that inner Picasso, and you're trying to make him do something different. But I think American barbering or any type of barbering, you need to be very disciplined. I think you need to be very detail-oriented, very organized. You have to have a plan before you start, and you need to be able to be methodical while you're doing it. Really for me, it's just um, being open to creativity, being open to other people's ideas. And that's really what our wall team has done for each other, is um, we've been open to listen. We are proud to take risks and try new things, and if it fails, then we, we make adjustments and we try something else. The moment we stop trying things is when we really need to start worrying. They're down in the barber shops, really trying to figure out what it is that the barbers really want. Not just how it looks, but how it feels, how, how much it weighs, uh, how powerful it's going to be. And they just really do their homework on the, on the products. Wall is a family-owned business that believes in unity, solidarity, built on trust and admiration. Wall Clipper was founded in 1919 um, by my great-grandfather, Leo J. Wall. We actually tailored our clippers for professional use from the very beginning. Leo's uncle was a barber, so he had first-hand experience on what barbering was all about and could see the awkwardness of having a motor detached from the unit. Leo did invent the clipper back when he was in high school. It was pretty impressive that a high school person could do that. The barbers and hairstylists are what makes us what we are, and they are very creative people. They are the ones that touch and feel and, and work with our tools to cut hair and make people look good. So I still believe in community. That's what the barbershop is all about, community. That's why it's the cornerstone of the neighborhood. When you walk into a barber shop, you're more welcome. Hey, how are you? Where are you from? Okay, cool. Hey, I'm Miguel. Go ahead and have a seat. We're going to take care of you. Barbershops play such a huge role. Like Some people don't even realize how cool barbershops are. If you want to know who is the best guy to do, get your roof done, who can do your sidewalk, where's the best place to eat, go to a barbershop. You know, go in there, get a haircut, and you can find out anything you want from the barber. When they walk in, if they're having a bad day, and, and you sit down and you talk to them, you let them vent, you let them, you know, you listen to them or whatever, you do their hair, you make them feel good, they walk out the door and they're feeling really, really good about themselves, and that right there is, is worth it. Starting my own shop was more of the freedom of doing both, men and women. Doing black people, white people, mixed people, Spanish people. Not getting put into one category because I'm not one category. I do everything. Hair color, relaxers, cutting. I love doing short hair. I love the precision of it. Um, everything with clippers. I just feel like everybody's a family here. Everybody really takes care of me. It's a, it's a really good camaraderie with everybody else that's a part of Wall. Like we say, if you work hard, guess what? It'll happen for you. You can get it. You can do it. No matter what it seems like, no matter what I've been through, I'm not there anymore. You take yourself out of that space by believing in what you think can come. It's a dream. Faith is like a big dream. If you keep dreaming the same dream, or if you keep encouraging yourself, keep saying the same thing over and over, you can speak it into existence. And I see the fact that the only way I got there is because I didn't let the circumstance get me. I got the circumstance. If I 
Rock.